Hi everybody, welcome to and back to my channel. So today I'm going to be upcycling jeans into a corset. This video is going to take way too long so I don't want to ramble. But as you can see, I'm making some designs in Photoshop and then I chose my favourite one which was this one. So these are the jeans that I'm going to be upcycling today. So stay tuned to see how I go about making the corset. So here I'm just taping together my fitted basic bodice which fits me really well. Um, I didn't really have a plan but I kind of did because I knew that it fit me I was going to try and develop a pattern from it but I was having difficulty moving the darts about and getting rid of them and stuff but moving it so I decided to scrap this idea and start again. So on to plan two. My idea behind this was that if I take my body measurements and plan it out on a piece of paper I can try and develop a pattern but as we can see it ended up with the letter S and we know that I'm not that curvy so something's not adding up. So I decided that I need to start again because you know otherwise we're not going to have a corset at the end of this. <laughs> okay this camera angle is crazy but yeah it's just a bit long moving the tripod again so basically <clears throat> my new plan is to just basically sew like a um just a tube tube top then i'm going to pin basically pin it or whatever mark it so that i can kind of get a pattern that's just the easiest way i can think about going about it without having to get maps involved because that's not nice for this plan, I took my full bust measurement using a measuring tape and then I folded my fabric in half and from the folded edge I marked my width which was half of my full bust measurement and then just drew a straight line down from my length and sewed a straight stitch down the side. So once I sewed up the sides, I put the top on and put my centre front line down the middle. Then I added my star lines which is where the seams and the boning will go. Once I did that, I started pinning along the lines so that it would fit really snug to my body. I was making sure that my style lines were in the centre of my pinning for accuracy. So I knew this method worked, but because I was working with such a big amount of fabric, you know, all around my body, it was getting hard to pin. So I decided that I probably just need to go about it a bit differently. Okay, so I promise you this is the final time now. All I did... <laughs> What I did, <laughs> all I did was took a piece of fabric and I pinned it in the centre um, and at the area where I wanted the top of my corset to be. Again, I drew my star lines in, which was going to be my seams and my bones. And then obviously I pinned it towards my body so that it'll fit me. One thing that I forgot to mention is that you're going to want to wear a tight fitting top underneath because we're going to be pinning this sample to ourselves. So um, back to the point, I st carried on pinning, I drew in my star lines, the shape of the bottom of my corset and once I was happy with this I traced the lines where I pinned with a water soluble marker so that when I take this sample off I'll be able to follow those lines and just sew along it under the sewing machine. Um, you're going to see me like snipping the bottom of the sample and that's just because as I got to the edge of the sample I found it a bit harder to get rid of the lines so this just helped release the tension. Um, one thing I would say is that if I was to do this again I would do it with a woven fabric so a fabric that doesn't stretch because this stretchy fabric was just so hard to work with. But here's what your sample looks like. You can see that it's shaped around your bust and now you just want to take it to the sewing machine and sew along those lines. So once I finished sewing, I repinned the sample to myself just to make sure I was happy with the fit of everything. And then the next step was just to make the back piece. So for this, I just placed my sample on top of another piece of fabric. I traced out the side seam and drew a straight line on the top and bottom, and then I just cut it out. Okay, so here's where it can get a little bit complicated, but I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can. So I'm just taking apart my sample piece, and as you can see, I'm just tracing my lines. So the bits that are sewed, um, where I wanted my star line and boning to be, I need to mark those lines because when I take this apart, well, you'll see in a bit, but basically I'm just cutting all the separate lines so obviously the last boning and the front boning didn't have any pinning so I was able to just cut them but the ones that I did sew, I had to trim the seam allowance so that 
um, I can actually take them apart. So once I trimmed the seam allowance, I just started to unpick. And once I finished unpicking, you can see the line that I drew. That's the net line, so it's the actual true pattern line. So you just wanna cut along that, and then you should have all your final pattern pieces. Okay, so as you can see in this clip, I'm just adding my boning lines onto the back because I didn't want it to be like really simple and boring. So I just did the same thing I did with the sample pieces and I cut that up. And then I placed all of my pieces onto paper so that I could trace around them and have them as a solid pattern. The next thing to do is just add your seam allowance. So seam allowance is essentially just the extra bit of fabric that you're gonna need to sew everything together because if you don't add this on, then your pattern's gonna be too small. So, you know, you need something for it to hang on to. One thing I wanna point out is everybody's pattern pieces are gonna look different. Obviously, breast size is a big, you know, difference in this. So the reason why I chose this method is because it's more accommodating for people with larger you know what i'm talking about anyways so now i'm placing the pieces onto my lining and i'm just trying to arrange them in the best way to use my fabric more efficiently but i'm not i'm not really doing that not really but anyways i cut i traced around those pieces and i cut them all out but as you can tell i've used the pattern pieces facing up so the writing's facing up which means that the next time I cut these out, I need to flip the pattern pieces so that the writing's facing down so that there'll be opposites and stuff. But this only really matters if you have pattern fabric because this is just a plain white fabric. It doesn't really matter. But I'm still gonna do it just so that you can get into the habit of knowing how to cut out your pieces properly. So as you can see, I'm just laying all my pattern pieces down now. These are the ones that have been cut with the seam allowance and I'm just trying to understand how to put these together because the curves are crazy like it just it didn't make sense to me but um the thing that i would say to overcome this is when you've got the sample pin to yourself maybe just take a photo so that you know how everything's gonna fit together so here i'm just pinning all my pieces together and getting ready to sew them but i'm gonna insert a diagram so that you know how to put your pieces together One thing that I found that helped me put the pieces together more easily was marking the neckline. So because we used a one centimeter seam allowance, I just marked that in from both sides and basically figured out where the actual line was. So as you can see in the video, I'm just doing this on the top corner, well all the corners of the pattern pieces. And then I'm just using that to pin the pattern pieces together so that I get them in the exact spot. So here's the beginning of my mistakes. First one, I sewed the back of the corset up when it's supposed to get laced up, so please don't do that. Make sure that your back is in two separate pieces, but I still want you to iron it because we want the seams to lay as flat as possible. So now we need to take our jeans apart, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is start with the waistband because I'm going to use that to seal the edge of the corset. So you want to separate the waistband and then you just want to unpick the side seams of your legs. So I chose to do the inside seam of the leg because usually that seam has less stitching on it. Trace out all your pattern pieces on there and place them strategically so that you don't waste fabric and that you avoid things like this because that would affect the way my corset looks. Now I'm just going to cut these out and then I've got to do the same for that leg over there. I almost made the silly mistake of not flipping my pattern pieces so obviously I've cut those ones there but I cut them with the pattern facing this way so when you get onto the other side of the leg you need to flip the patterns over. Okay so here I'm just demonstrating physically how to put your pieces together. Um, I hope that this is a bit more easier to understand if you didn't get it. You do want to sew the center of your corset at the front, but you don't want to sew the back. I just need to make sure that you guys remember that because I messed up. So here I'm just showing you what my corset looks like after I've sewn everything together. So what you're going to want to do is 
iron all your seams flat and you're going to want to trim into our curvy seams because that will just allow the fabric to lie flatter and release some of the tension. I'm just showing you from a different angle that you can see that the corset is shaped around me and I'm also trimming the edges of my corset so that it's a nice neat shape. And then we should be ready to attach this to the lining but I need to fix my mistake that I made which you'll see in a bit. I don't know if you can tell but I, I had to take in the top bit where basically the top of the corset about 1.5 centimeters so I've just marked it and then I'm going to just sew until it meets that line basically but you want it to meet as smoothly as possible so that there's no lumps. So I've just sewn the 1.5 centimeters in. Even though I've been sewn for so long, I still managed to make silly mistakes. So if you look at number four, you've got it going like this, getting bigger at the top of the corset. But on the main fabric, I did it the wrong way around. But this one looks correct because of the side seams and then the back matches up. But this one doesn't. Um, make sure that your front and back matches up, don't be like me. <laughs> so now I'm just fixing my mistakes. So I laid the back panel on top of my front corset and I just trace the side seams so that I know that they're both going to match up. I made a mistake and obviously this was the centre back but what I did was I lined the centre back up with the side seam and I wasn't supposed to do that. So what I'm going to have to do for the back now is just make it straight so that it doesn't go up like this in the back. But once I did this, I had to make sure that the lining and the main fabric was the same. So whatever you do to one piece, you need to do to the other just to make sure that they'll add up when you go to sew them together. So here I'm just folding both of the front corset pieces in half and laying them on top of each other because of my mistake I need to trace them now to make sure that they're the same shape. You shouldn't have to do this but obviously if you do make the same mistake here's how you fix it. So now I'm just going to pin and sew my back pieces to the front pieces of my corset. Make sure that your seam lines slash boning lines are running in the correct direction because I nearly messed up here as well. This is what both of your corset pieces should be looking like, main corset fabric and lining. And what you want to do is face them right sides kissing and just sew a straight stitch along the top. Now you need to iron that seam flat. If you do have puckering, just snip the seams like we did before to release the tension and then you're going to want to top stitch it so that the lining stays behind and then just give it another press to make sure everything's flat. So now we're onto the boning. This is probably my favourite bit and it also means that we're near the end of the corset. So boning's just going to add structure and stabilisation so it's just going to fit us a lot snugger and it won't lose its shape. All I'm doing here is just measuring how long I need the centre front piece to be and then how wide I need my boning channels to be. So this will just depend on the width of your boning. Mine worked out to be about 1cm so from the centre front line I'm just going to sew 0.5cm on both sides. Your width Width will be different maybe depending on what you use um, you can actually use zip ties but you just want to do the same thing which is filing them just to make sure that it doesn't poke through the top so I carried on doing this for all the seams on the front of the corset until I reached the back. Now on the back I had to cut a little bit off because it was still a bit too long like it started to overlap. So I'm just chopping that off and now I'm just showing you how we're going to clean the edges. So you want the lining and the main fabric to be right sides kissing and you're just going to sew, pin and sew a straight line down there. Then you're going to want to snip your edges so that you can turn it inside more easily and that you'll get a nice sharp corner. And then we're gonna flip it inside out and top stitch and press it. Now that the edges are neat, we can do our last boning channel on the back. I sewed both of the seams with the boning channel, but I only used one because it would have interfered with my eyelets. Once that was done, I put my eyelets in. I'll leave information in the description as to where you can get the pliers and how to use them. But I ended up running out of washers for the back so my eyelets won't stay in very long which is another reason why I've decided to do a part 2 to this video so that I can fix my mistakes and just make a clearer tutorial. Here I'm just trimming my boning pieces down to the length of the corset and then a further 1cm to allow me to sew the bias binding on the edge because we don't want our needle to try go through the boning, it will just snap. So I just unpicked the waistband into two separate pieces and pinned it along the bottom edge of the corset right sides touching. I sewed with a 1cm seam allowance. 
While sewing my bias binding, I ended up running out of length and these are the problems that you'll face when you're upcycling, so you just have to improvise. So what I did was I just unpicked the what I sewed already up until the side seam and then I joined the other side of the waistband that I had left over to extend the length and then I just carried on sewing as normal. Once I finished that, I just trimmed my seam allowance so that I could fold it over as small as possible. Then I did a stitch in the ditch, which is just sewing inside the seam. This can be hard, so if it makes it easier, I would suggest just doing a top stitch, but I will however leave a video in the description that shows you how to do it. So I just trimmed the excess. Usually I would overlock the edges just so that it doesn't fray, but I need to get mine repaired at the moment. So here's the finished corset. I literally can't believe how many mistakes I made, I feel like I made the tutorial way too complicated now so I am going to be making a part 2 but for now here's the lacing and then the big reveal. That's the end of the video guys. So that's the end of the video guys. Trust me, I'm gonna make this better because this is it's not the one for me. But um stay tuned for a part two to see me make this even better. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.